Welcome to class. I'm going to uh, give you a short mini lecture uh, to introduce our relationships class. Uh, you should have already watched the introduction to the class uh, with all the syllabus assignments and stuff. So this really is just to begin to introduce the topic. I want you to start off by taking out a blank piece of paper and answering these questions. So you're going to pause the video for a moment and then write down what your thoughts are. What is a relationship? Uh, what different kinds of relationships are there? And what are the important dimensions of a relationship? So pause the video right now and go ahead and write down your thoughts. All right. Now, we'll come back to some of those later and see how some of your thoughts align with some of the things that we are discussing in the beginning of this class. So let's start first with the building blocks of relationships. Um, we are innately designed to have a need to belong. We're very social species. In fact, when we do not have relationships, when we're deprived of close contact with other people, we actually suffer, whether it's a mental illness, or it's a depression, or we fail to thrive in areas of daily living or in productivity. Because at the core of who we are, uh, we are social. And not only do we need to interact with other people, but we seem to have a built-in need to actually be in intimate relationship with someone else. So let's talk about the nature of intimacy real fast. There are seven components of intimacy I'm gonna point out to you. The first one is knowledge. Intimate partners have extensive knowledge. Often they have secrets or confidential knowledge uh, about each other. And the, the more intimate or the more secret or the more extensive the knowledge is, the greater the level of intimacy is. So you'll find people that grow apart because they're not keeping up with um, the changes that might be going on in the maturing process or the lifespan process with um, their partner. Um, and you'll also notice that people suddenly feel intimately close or very, very close when they learn the secrets and start sharing the secrets that uh, one another may have. The second um, component of intimacy is interdependence. Intimate partners have strong, diverse, and enduring influence on each other. So there is a distinction between the two of them that they bond together and they share that distinction. It's important to note that interdependence has to do with sharing the distinction or the diversity that kind of exists. This is going to play in later when we talk about whether or not you uh, fall more on the egalitarian camp or the complementarian camp, um, how this component of interdependence, interdependence plays out in an intimate relationship. The third component is caring. Intimate par partners feel more affection uh, for one another than they do for most other people. So there's a greater sense of caring or affection that is shared between the two. The fourth one is trust. Intimate partners expect treatment from one another that is fair, honorable, and benevolent. So as this trust moves forward, then the intimacy moves forward. If trust slips back, then intimacy slips back as well. Component number five is responsiveness. Intimate partners are more attentive to each other's needs and they support each other more effectively than they do most other people. So you're beginning to see as the components move down this list that there's an exclusivity that is required um, in an intimate relationship. Somebody is elevated above other relationships. They don't sit in an equal status with them. So you're choosing to respond to the intimate partner over other people. Um, so this responsiveness is, is very important. In fact, um, Gottman and Gottman has done a number of researches that deal with the idea of responsiveness and discover that responsiveness is one of the primary elements for a healthy relationship. He calls them bids and that when uh, partners will offer bids and respond to bids, uh, he actually tracked them 11 per day that they rate the intimacy and the satisfaction of their relationship higher. Um, bids simply are uh, 30 second responses to join quickly um, and to kind of connect and, with what the other partner is doing 
and the moment or something the other partner appreciates. So this willingness to be responsive elevates the nature of intimacy. Number six is mutuality. Uh, intimate partners think of themselves as a couple instead of two entirely different people. So let's think about this for a minute. Here, here is ways that you can think about mutuality. On a scale, there are seven options there. So if you look at each one, you can see that there's a, a variant of how much um, the people feel like they are together, how much is shared and how much is separate. Um, so take a minute, if you think about an important relationship that you have right now, where would you score yourself in that intimate relationship? With uh, going across the top being one, two, three, four, and then five, six, and seven along the bottom. What's interesting about mutuality is that I don't think number one is healthy, nor do I think number seven is healthy. Um, there's a loss of sense of the other person when you get all the way to number seven. So health is going to be somewhere along uh, in between one and seven. Um, the biggest issue comes when one partner has an expectation of mutuality that is very different than the other partner. And so there's a constant sense of um, uh, competition to try to get to that point. The other issue with mutuality is that sometimes people hold things back because, and not necessarily intentionally, but because of woundedness or brokenness or fear in the past or negative past relationships. And so there's all these kind of guards that uh, prevent this mutuality of moving in. Um, from a biblical perspective, we see that the two should be one um, meaning they should function uh, as one. And there's a, a sense of togetherness. And, and that would indicate, you might think, a number seven on this scale. Um, but there's a difference between um, seeing themselves as uh, a single unit and then functioning as a single unit. Um, I think you'll see in the biblical model, and we'll talk about that more in uh, the June 11th class, that the biblical model has... Uh, a clear identity of their individuality that is joined together. So mutuality actually comes from something that is drawn outside of the two people, as well as how the two people crisscross um, in their sense of oneness or sameness. The last one is a component of intimacy is commitment. Intimate partners expect the relationship to continue and they are working to realize that goal. So even partners that struggle a lot with intimacy, they understand that that commitment is part of it and they're trying to fix the relationships. That's why they go to counseling. That's why they go to read books. And that's why they say, you know, they are constantly sometimes even having conflict is because there's a sense of commitment. They want it to work. And that is in the nature of intimacy is, is a sense of commitment. This is going to play into your discussion um, of polymory, which is uh, a, a a growing trend uh, in pop culture of having multiple partners and multiple relationships. And, and so how does that affect the sense of commitment and intimacy? Now, we, we need to belong and that, uh, that drive to belong pushes us toward intimate connections. As I said in the beginning, people suffer both mentally and physically when they lack intimacy. And we have a tendency to want to form stable, affectionate connections to others. And this may just be from a non-Christian perspective, an evolutionary adaptive process, meaning we survive better when, when we are connected and have stable, affectionate connections. Um, and third, that God created us with a desire for relationship with him and with his creation or other people, that because we bear the image of God, we are innately social. So we are designed, designed to connect with other people. And we'll talk more about that next week as well. Um, how important is it? Well, I think it's, it could be a matter of life and death. You'll see here on this chart um, that people were with, diagnosed with uh, terminal illness, the better the quality of their marriage relationship the longer they lived. And so we can see some correlations of, 
of the fact that uh, relationship quality